means that that data type can represent negative numbers, positive numbers, and zero. Unsigned can only represent positive numbers and zero. Unsigned variables can account for numbers about twice as high in the positive direction with the green space. Doubles are like floats, but are twice as big in order to have twice the precision. Char star p creates a pointer that points to a char type. When you declare a variable, I make space for it. I make it possible to predict the layout of any type of variable in memory. I stick in extra bytes of information in order to make the address come out nice. This is called padding. Also, each variable or array must occupy a contiguous block of memory. If a variable takes n bytes, that address must start on 0 mod n. ASCII is the most common way of representing a char, which takes up one byte. The first 127 possible combinations map to a character. These are the different data types that hold integers. When we want to print out a number, we use percent %d, so it will interpret it as a signed decimal, or percent %u for an unsigned decimal, or percent %x for a hexadecimal. B2U, or binary to unsigned, length W, is the most common interpretation of unsigned ints. In this, you just interpret numbers as you would mathematically in base 2. Umax sub W will be an int with all 1s, and Umin sub W will be an int with all zeros. B2T, or 2's complement form, is the most common interpretation of signed ints. In this method, the first bit is 0 if it is positive, and negative 2 to the w minus 1 if the number is negative. If it is positive, you interpret the number as you would in B2U. However, if the number is negative, meaning the first bit is 1, you start from 2 to the power of the length negative 1, and build up from there with the rest of the bits as you would in a normal base 2 system. In this, t max sub w will be a 0 followed by all 1s, and t min sub w will be a 1 followed by all zeros. If you ever want to flip the sign, you can take the inverse of each bit and then add 1. One thing to think about is going between signed and unsigned, or when you want to perform operations with them interacting. I usually handle this on the bit level. This means that the bits stay the same, and I just interpret them differently. If I were to say int button equals 3, and the sequence is 4 bits, this would be 0, 1, 1, 1 in binary. And if then I said unsigned rows equals unsigned button, then I would see that button bit level perspective is 0, 1, 1, 1, and interpret this using 2's complement form, which would be 3. However, let's say we were to do the same process but the number was negative 2. In 2's complement, we would say int peach equals negative 2. With a 4-bit sequence, this would be 110. Then, what if we say unsigned banana equals peach? Then I would recognize that the bits are 110 and see that you want it unsigned and thus tell you that banana equals 6. If the numbers are in the range where the possibilities overlap, the number will come out the same. However, if they are outside the other's range, they will be different. I'm going to assume you remember all Boolean algebra from logic and sets. The four foundational operations can also be performed on bit vectors. A bit vector is a sequence of ones and zeros. If you were to do an operation on two bit vectors, you would do the operation on each place value and put the answers into a bit vector. If you want to use logical operations as opposed to by the bits, like in an if statement, you use these. I support bitwise Boolean operations. See, I do support some things. I'm not mean to absolutely everyone. You're mean to Bool. Why you no love me? I don't need Bool. True is 1 and false is 0. See, I don't need it. 